everyone, I am Teacher Mia Bides, teaching Grade 8 Science, and our topic for today is all about faults and earthquakes, Quarter 2, Week 1. After going through this lesson, you are expected to Describe what a fault is using models or illustrations. Explain how movements along faults generate earthquakes. Differentiate the epicenter of an earthquake from its focus. Differentiate the intensity of an earthquake from its magnitude. And differentiate between active and inactive faults. Let's recall what you have learned in our last topic, which is about electricity, by answering the different questions or statements. What happens to current as resistance decreases? If your answer is, as resistance decreases, current increases, you are correct. Next is, Predict what will happen to current as resistance approaches zero. The answer is, when resistance approaches zero, the amount of current becomes very large. Did you get the correct answer? Very good! Let's proceed to the next statement. It is a condition due to direct or indirect electrical contact with energized conductor or equipment and from which a person may sustain electrical injury from shock or damage to property or both. If you think the answer is electrical hazard, you are correct. Another question is, how can electric current damages the body in three ways? I know you can recall this. The first one is, say it with me, it can cause improper function of the brain and heart. The second one is, the body will experience intense heat that can cause skin burning. And the third one, muscles will involuntarily contract which will be hard to control next question is what is direct current or dc dc is a current that travels from negative to the positive terminal it does not change its direction it is the current we can get from a battery dc or direct current passing your body cannot cause electric shock but can cause burning if the positive and negative wire can come into contact how about alternating current or ac ac is a current that travels from negative to positive and from positive to negative terminals great you are now ready for the next topic. Please get your ball pen and a notebook or any sheet of paper that you will use in taking down the keywords or important details about our topic for today. Be sure to be back after this one minute music. <laughs> Have you remembered your lesson in your lower years? 
to the Philippines is located along the Ring of Fire? The Ring of Fire refers to the region around the Pacific Ocean that is commonly hit by an earthquake and volcanic eruptions. In this lesson, we will focus on earthquakes and faults. An earthquake is one of the most horrifying phenomena that anyone can ever experience. Earth is rock, solid and steady. These are your beliefs. However, you have encountered that the ground shakes and this contradicts what you believed before. Earthquakes have caused some destruction all over the world. Even before, people have started recording these events. The wonder scientists have been working very hard on how to predict when an earthquake occurs. We cannot stop the natural event from occurring. To predict when an earthquake will occur is always a question by many. Thus, for survival, you must learn about earthquakes. For you to achieve the objectives of this lesson, you are to do the following. Take your time to listen with these lessons carefully. If you have questions or queries, feel free to write them down and we will answer after the lesson. And be attentive for you to understand the lesson. A fault is a break in the Earth's crust, and along the break, significant movement has taken place. The word break refers to a crack in the ground, while crust refers to the outermost layer of the Earth. We live on the surface of the crust. Earthquakes are vibrations or tremors produced within the Earth's outer layer or crust. An earthquake is tectonic. It occurs when parts of the Earth's crust break and also the rocks together with a fault slide near each other or far away from each other. This is often called faulting. An earthquake could also be volcanic. Tremors are often produced to signal an upcoming discharge at this vicinity or region. The pressure makes the rocks move. The place where the earthquake originates is called focus. The Earth's surface directly above the focus is called an epicenter. The seismic waves travel outward from the focus in all directions when energy is released. Scientists or experts during this field are called seismologists. There are two major scales during which earthquakes are measured. Magnitude is that the entire energy released by an earthquake at its focus. The magnitude of a particular earthquake is also one number that does not vary from place to position. The intensity of an earthquake is measured in terms of its geological effects and so the general damage it brings. Earthquakes of giant magnitude are stronger and typically more destructive than those of a small magnitude. Away from the epicenter, the intensity of an earthquake becomes weaker. The scale measures the intensity of shaking. The intensity and the magnitude's measurement are always corresponding to each other. The intensity of an earthquake gives us an idea of how strong or weak the shaking is.
The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOLX, use the following scale to describe the intensity of earthquakes in the Philippines. We have 10 intensity scales. Number 1 is scarcely perceptible. Number 2 is slightly felt. Number 3 is weak. 4. Moderately strong. 5. Strong. 6. Very strong. 7. Destructive. 8. Very destructive. 9. Devastating. And the last one is completely devastating. However, consequences accompanying any faults assume a residence was constructed on a fault. As the spot displaces is slowly, portions of the residence will be steered. The ground will fracture, openings will not shut, and the roof may begin to drip. It is essential to perceive the spot of active faults. Considerably, no significant constructions should be constructed near or on them. Fivolts has a diagram that displays the active faults in the Philippines. An active fault is one that has moved in the past and is suspected to move again. Experts adopt various techniques to uncover out if a fault is active. One is by reviewing the country's past recordings. Archaeologists periodically record about disruptive incidents such as earthquakes. Another is by analyzing the oscillations former and today that come from faults. Nevertheless, different method is by inspecting the surroundings. For example, a fault may meet a path and because of that, the road is displaced. Either a fault may cast over a river or the river current is then changed. Or a fault may slice through mountains and form cliffs. It is not to say that anyone can spot an active fault. Let's watch a video clip of five recorded earthquakes. Let's sum it up. A fault is a break in the Earth's crust, and along the break, 
significant movements has taken place. Its movement can be described along the fault in the horizontal direction. That is, the ground moves sideways. Let's watch this short video for you to understand it better. For your assignment, research about tsunami and earthquake interiors and read them for our next topic. Answer all the activities in your modules and submit it on time. Ya dali suki kamruna a 